देशपांडे साहेब तुमचा माईक ऑन करा सर तुम्हाला म्यूट केलंय कोणीतरी हा सर आता आहे आवाज येतो आवाज येतो या या सॉरी फॉर द इंटरप्शन सर वी आर लाईव ऑन युट्यूब यू कॅन स्टार्ट मिटिंग प्लीज ओके सर व्हेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन अँड ऑल आय वेलकम टू टुडेज वेमिनार आय प्रोफेसर वसंत पवार associate professor and head department of electronics at dr ambedkar college is the convener of the webinar thank you for taking a time out and being here today initially i salute to param pujya bharat ratna dr baba saheb ambedkar the architect of the indian constitutions and pray to the lord gautam buddha the chief guest of the webinars are honorable bhante arya nagarjun suray sasai he is the president of param pujya dr baba saheb ambedkar smarak samiti holy diksha bhumi nagpur honorable dr murli dhar chandekar is the vice chancellor of rtm nagpur university and respected dr neeraj khatti sir is the registrar of rtm nagpur university respected dr sudhir phuljele sir is the secretary and the director of dr ambedkar smarak samiti holy diksha holy diksha bhumi the chairperson of a national webinar is dr pratibha siria madam is the principal of a dr ambedkar college and the speaker of the webinars are dr abhay deshpande is the director of ssg embedded solutions and dr nilesh meshram is the associate professor head department of electronics from a mathura das mohta science college nagpur the co convener of the webinar is dr satish j sharma is the head department of electronics and computer science from rtm nagpur university dr pradeep daikar is the chairman of a board of studies in electronics rtm nagpur university nagpur dr hema menon is a iqsc coordinator Devakar Divedi is the organizing secretary of the webinar Dr N V Shivarkar Mrs Poonam Yadav are the organizing members and all faculty members students and all the participants from the various college i welcome you all on this virtual platform for a brainstorming national webinar on a role of microcontroller in a day to day life conducted by the department of college department of electronics dr ambedkar college in association with the department of electronics and computer science rtm nagpur university thank you very much i now request principal dr ambedkar college uh, dr pm siria madam to please deliver the welcome address please to deliver welcome address thank you power sir ladies and gentlemen a very good morning to one and all today i feel very happy to welcome you all to this national webinar and it's my proud privilege to brief you all about my institution dr ambedkar college nagpur founded by the visionary late padma shri dada saheb gaikwad in 1964 and is affiliated to rashtrasanta tukdoji maharaj nagpur university nagpur is indeed a 
a time tested center for higher learning ladies and gentlemen we are all aware that dr ambedkar college run under the aegis of parama pujya dr baba saheb ambedkar smarak samiti is situated in the sprawling premises of the holy diksha bhumi which is the historic place where bharat ratna dr baba saheb ambedkar embraced buddhism with a modest beginning in 1964 the institution now has 56 glorious years of experience in imparting quality education in the faculties of arts commerce science law and management with its uncompromising standards of excellence our institution believes in imparting man making character building and value added education the reaccreditation of the college as a grade by nat and the status of college with potential for excellence conferred by the ugc bs eloquent testimony of its unshifting commitment to quality dr ambedkar college is truly a college like none other none other and it is not surprising that it has won a very special and unique place in the academic extracurricular and sports landscape of nagpur city vidarbha region as well as in the central india the strength of college students is approximately 5000 students of very big institution ladies and gentlemen we have assembled here for the one day national webinar on role of microcontroller in electronic day to day life which is organized by the department of Uh, electronics of a college in association with department of electronics and computer science rtm nagpur university nagpur i dr mrs pratibha m siria principal of the college welcome all the delegates participants and research scholars for this national webinar i would like to extend my warm welcome to all the eminent speakers of this webinar dr s j sharma dr abhay deshpande and dr nilesh mishra i am sure that today's webinar would be very informative and beneficial to all the participants i appreciate the efforts taken by our faculty members shri v s pawar hod electronics dr n v shivarkar and uh, dr h j sharma hod electronics and computer science rtm nagpur university and mr d v divedi Uh, for organizing today's national webinar once again on behalf of dr ambedkar college diksha bhumi nagpur i welcome you all thank you thank you thank you very much madam now i would like to invite dr sj sharma to deliver his inaugural address please thank you vasant pawar uh, good morning everyone i am dr sharma from department of electronics and computer science uh, it is indeed a pleasure for me to have a association with the dr baba saheb ambedkar college nagpur to start one day seminar on role of microcontrollers in day to day life everyone is basically worried the students recently are worried about what will happen to them after covid 19 situation uh, unlocks the first question is how do they start their career because the final year students they have to make a career after the when they pass out and what is the role of the microcontrollers or embedded systems in their life will they be able to start their own enterprise in case they choose a microcontrollers or embedded system so i think uh, this topic is very relevant and we know that since uh, march when the lockdown was announced the whole uh, the whole environment in, uh, in india or abroad is completely flooded with the webinars seminars hands on training but this one is entirely different because we have a person from the industry who has uh, given consultancy to more than 250 companies and who is a person very innovative and had designed a lot of products dr ap deshpande is the right kind of person in embedded systems or microcontrollers so he will be basically of a immense help to the for the present generation uh, in order to cope up the pressure how to choose a career uh, 
you find that the embedded systems, they find a lot of applications in our household activities, uh, in the home automation, in washing machines, in digital camera, even in mobiles, even biomedical instruments, in industries. In fact, Industry 4.0 is the latest trend and it has found a lot of applications in industry, in, especially in IoT-based systems or wireless sensor networks. It finds a lot of applications, process control, or even uh, packaging, delivering. Robotics is another application. So you find that this particular topic, which is uh, the role of microcontrollers in day-to-day -day life, probably it has become the lifestyle. Microcontroller has become a lifestyle. And uh, classic example is Dr. A.P. Deshpande, who has imbibed microcontroller as his lifestyle. So with these words, I really welcome all the keen learners and listeners to the one day, seminar, one day seminar on uh, role of microcontrollers in day-to-day -day life. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, giving me an opportunity to be associated with a very prestigious college. And our department, as you know, it started way back in 1987 in the, uh, in the university with only a few students in uh, the course that is MSc Electronics. The department started in the corridors of Department of Physics. And now you find the department has an independent building and then there is a computer section that is MSc Computer Science was introduced in the university in 2015 and 16. Now we have MSc Electronics and MSc Computer Science as the two courses running in independently in the two buildings. And you will find that the department has been able to really uh, mobilize the grant to the tune of more than 1.3 crores. We have an independent biomedical instrumentation laboratory, which will be useful to the students of the undergraduates and the postgraduates. We are also planning to start the diploma course in the biomedical instrumentation. I think uh, this particular field by which is now coming up in a big way and Honorable Prime Minister has also uh, given a clarion call to the youngsters, the young generations of India that one should go for the indigenous uh, systems and make in India, make in Maharashtra and make in Nagpur. You will be happy to note that the Department of Electronics and Computer Science, the research scholars have designed their own uh, uh, research grade instruments to uh, almost like 15 instruments have been designed indigenously inside the laboratory of Department of Electronics and Computer Science. And I think that is a big achievement. And the students recently, they are really keen on learning new things, uh, practicing them and trying to some innovative ideas. So with this particular uh, trend that is going on, we are keeping pace with the technology and the students will certainly be benefited with this particular one day webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Vasant Pawar. And over to the organizers for the next deliberations. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, now, in this webinar, we are going to discuss the need of microcontroller in our day to day life. For that, Firstly, we need to understand a difference between microprocessor and microcontroller. Microprocessor is at a central processing unit and it is used in general purpose, which is contains no RAM, no ROM, no input output ports on a chip. They are able to handle the load of a data, whereas Microcontroller has a central processing unit in addition to RAM, ROM, input output ports and timers all embedded on a single chip. Though microprocessor is a heart of the computer and microcontroller is a brain of the computer system. In many applications, microprocessors needs more space, consumes more powers, and it is expensive, whereas microcontroller takes less space, less power, and it is cheaper in nature. Microcontroller has many applications, widely applications in the field of all, in the field of, for example, home appliances, 
like intercom, telephone, security system, fax machine, computer, remote controls. Hence, there are so many applications of the microcontroller. Hence, it is a necessity to learn a microcontroller. Now, uh, the speaker of this uh, role of microcontroller, I would like to introduce the guest speaker of a first session of the webinar on a role of microcontroller in day-to-day -day life is Dr. Abhay Deshpande, who is the director of SSG Solutions, uh, Embedded Solutions. He is a good administrator, academicians, and technical hand in the subject of electronics. He has total 15 years teaching experience and seven years industrial experience. He has consulted to technical support over all 37 industries and also design and develop more than 100 industrial projects. He has developed and designed more than 15 educational kits on a embedded system and robotics. Hence, Dr. Abhay Deshpande is a member of International Technical Advisory Panel of Texas Instrumentations, Instruments in USA. He has conducted more than 75 workshops for students on RCAD 8085 microcontroller and embedded system designs. He has published more than 12 national, international research papers in the journals. Therefore, I request to Dr. Abhay Deshpande, sir, to give uh, information about the microcontroller. Please, Dr. Deshpande, sir, give the information about the microcontroller. Thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, first of all, I'm, I'm really thankful to uh, all the coordinators, uh, uh, principal of college, uh, management of the college, uh, Dr. Pawar, sir, for inviting me. Hello, sir. Ha, sir, link nahi hai. Hello. Ring kar Hello. हाँ सर चालू है काय झालं सर
हेलो सर देर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन माइक्रो कंट्रोलर एंड माइक्रो प्रोसेसर माइक्रो प्रोसेसर माइक्रो प्रोसेसर इज नथिंग बट दे सीपीयू एंड यूज ए जनरल पर्पज now there are so many applications of a microprocessor and that microprocessor is a heart of the computer system there are so many things we can learn with the help of a microprocessor so many instructions we learn that arithmetic Uh, operations logical operations and so on now the microprocessor and microcontrollers they are the related part of the electronics and widely used where everywhere now the each and every Uh, that uh, applications of a different field for example home appliances as well as offices and so many things that uh, these microcontrollers whereas we use now microcontroller is nothing but the a um, uh, brain of a computer system now that brain works of a person same that microcontroller works in the system there are so many applications in the field of uh, different fields like intercom telephones security systems fax machines and so on computer remote controls hence it is necessary to learn microcontroller usko ye bula lete hain kya नीलेश के बारे में ठीक है उसके बारे में नहीं नहीं सेकंड से हाँ हो आ गई क्या किसको देश पांडे सर को ले लो ना करू क्या इंट्रोड्यूस हेलो 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 सर ऑडियोबल आए सर हाँ हाँ ऑडियोबल आए ओके ओके स्टार्ट 
yes okay, yes okay. please Shall continue oh. okay uh, yeah, yes sir. uh okay uh, so again uh, i'll repeat uh, that i am really thankful to all of you uh, that uh, uh, they have given i uh, this chance to interact with you all and my special thanks to dr satish master that only he is boosting me every time and he is uh, <laughs> saying many things about it. it's not back i'm hello as i'm living in microcontroller i'm i'm uh, uh, almost hello for 24 hours i'm, uh, I'm living with the microcontroller i'm i'm done okay okay oh. i start now okay uh, yeah, yes sir. uh okay Uh, so again, uh, I'll repeat uh, that I am really thankful to all of you uh, that uh, uh, they have given I uh, this chance to interact with you all. And my special thanks to Dr. Satish Sharma sir that only he, uh, he is boosting me every time and he is uh, <laughs> saying many things about me. it's not fact. I'm I'm living in four hours. I'm living with the microcontrollers. I'm I'm developing many. चालू करो नाउ आई हेयर बाय टेक अ प्लेजर फॉर इंट्रोड्यूसिंग द गेस्ट स्पीकर ऑफ द दिस सेशन इज डॉक्टर नीलेष मेश्राम हु इज द असोसिएट प्रोफेसर एंड हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स वर्किंग एट मथुरा दास मोहता साइंस कॉलेज नागपुर he did his post graduate degree in the age of 22 years in electronics from an is biomedical instrumentations and interfacing he awarded phd uh, diagnose or uh, treat or prevent the diseases in uh, humans so this is what is the emerging field in electronics now what is the need of instrumentation in the medical field as we are you uh, know that uh, we are having accidents uh, and then we require first aids then uh, we use it for the bp measurements ecg heart attacks and uh, brains that is eeg and other uh, things which are required by the human beings for uh their their daily routines to um, their their da daily routines to uh, explore them so these were the things then uh, what is actually the biomedical instrumentation is now we have a small little bl uh, block diagram which uh, everybody uh, might be knowing over here so uh, this is the analog filter that we are having uh, this is the analog input which is uh, supposed to be given to the analog filter and this is going to uh, be a transducer or a sensor or anything which which is going to convert this signal into an electrical parameter and this electrical parameter is then uh, is going to be converted into analog to uh, digital signals and now this digital signal is being processed by microcontrollers and then it they are again being converted into analog and they are used for the diagnosis purpose means we can have a print out we can keep the data uh, and uh, we can record uh, the things and uh, we can use it for further also 
so nowadays without this digital signal processing it it would not be easy to analyze and visualize data and perform their design and so on as far as electronic students and electronics researchers are concerned we require some history of the things history of uh, biological data which is to be manipulated and which is to be used for uh, the further development of new bio instruments uh, which were used in bio biomedical healthcare industries now uh, these the dsps is very often used method in biomedical uh, researches and also uh, we know some of those instruments like ecg uh, emg eeg and uh, say x ray machines uh, ventilators also so we are going to explore all those in the coming slides so these are some of the some some of the basic needs of uh, biomedical instrumentations now a basic biomedical instrumentations without a microcontroller would be like this if you are able to see my screen i hope i am visible hello hello ha I... yes you are visible thank you sir please keep me updating if i am not uh, okay uh, okay shaking it all right thank you sir thank you very much so uh, this is a basic instrumentation system which would look like uh, without a microcontroller sir so if you are able to see there these are some of the energy sources which might be electric light infrared mechanical ultrasound and these uh, these uh, parameters are being converted through this human body and which are detected by the sensors the transducers the electrodes and then they are given to some of the amplifiers and then they are being processed they are being amplified or they are being uh, used to record the analog signals and uh, this was the whole thing was controlled by these control systems and now they are being used to alarm to display the uh, data to store the data and to transmit the data as well as to record the data so these were the main uh, main uh, say uh, roles of the basic instrumentation system now if you are if you are involving or if you are implementing some uh, microcontrollers in it then how it might look so uh, basically again the same data is are being taken from a human body they are being uh, uh, taken by lead they are taken by the uh, say transducers sensors and they are given to a multi channel ad converters and these multi channel ad converters the output of which are given to a microcontrollers and they are being interfaced they are being interfaced through rf waves and these rf waves can be used by bluetooth big b wide uh, local area network or wifi nowadays and they they can also be connected to mobile phones laptops pdas and now uh, as we are talking about internet of things they can be uh, stored on the server and which can be used to detect and diagnose all those things so uh, these are some of the important um, parameters of uh, say uh microcontrollers which are which we are recently developing uh, uh in the uh, present electronic uh, world so uh, these are this is the basic uh, biomedical instrumentation will look like and then uh these are these are some of the sensors and transducers which i need to show all the students and researchers which are uh, available in the market and which can be used very easily these are some color sensors these are some gas sensors we have ldr sensor thermistors proximity sensors ultrasonics ultrasonic sensors ir receivers pir sensors rain sensors and so forth and so and these sensors uh, can be used even we are having some uh, modules of those these are some basic sensors which are which are being used by the uh, electronics fraternity uh for the development of uh, instruments and now we are working on the basic uh, biomedical instrumentation uh, instrumentation then uh, we are using this sensors now what what type of uh, sensors we are going to use for uh, say um, the biomedical field so we have some small sensors like uh, this is a pulse generator sensor 
day after uh, yesterday itself i went to the market and i have seen this as very small uh, pearl sensor which has itself in, uh, inbuilt inbuilt microcontroller everything in it and if you see at the size of this um, say the size of this is a very small you can put it on your finger also so this is a small sensor which is used for the heart rate and uh, the pulse sensor so this is actually used in the ordino kit which will be, which we also being exploring during this uh, uh, talk so this is a small sensor that can be used and these uh, uh, programs and softwares are already being uh, available on the open source uh, sources so these are uh, some of uh, the small sensors that can be used for biomedical instrumentation then uh, we, which type of bio sensors we are uh, using these are some of the bio sensors as, as earlier i have showed you uh, the bio, heart sensor and a pulse sensor similarly uh, this is a small sensor in which we uh, we can have these five uh, basic components which has uh, which is having a sensing element which can be you uh, which can have a transducer a uh, single a signal conditioner that that is a uh, amplifier or so and then a data processor that is a microcontroller and then the output generator so the whole thing <coughs> sorry can be uh, implemented in a very small uh, sort of uh, package which is readily available in the market and which can be used for n number of purposes n number of uh, say uh, n number of uh, applications in uh, biomedical instrumentations so these are called as some uh, biosensors uh, these biosensors are readily available and we can use it so my appeal to all uh, the research fraternity that we can explore many things and we are still lagging uh, behind in developing these types of instruments we are we are exporting these instruments uh, sensors from foreign countries why our uh, uh, indian peoples uh, are not able to uh develop or say prepare these types of sensors uh, here itself in india so uh, uh, coming to our talk applications of microcontrollers in biomedical application uh, biomedical instrumentation we will be exploring some of uh, uh, the applications of uh, these like hearing aid ecg electronic nose electronic turn ventilator so and so forth some of those examples which would uh, hopefully ignite the new generations to deal with this biomedical instrumentation in and uh, in microcontrollers <clears throat> so uh, first of all there is a hearing aid now uh, what is the basic concept of an hearing aid hearing aid if i call uh, a hearing aid uh, this is an small electronic sound amplifier nothing else sound amplifier which which can amplify the sound a person who is not able to hear a voice can use this a uh, small system which i'm going to show you now what it might have it ha might have a uh, a sensor or a voice uh, wo mic small mic which can uh, hear this sound and then he is going to amplify that sound and he can uh, it can be given to a small speaker which is which can be put in our ears which will be able to Uh, for the uh, person who is not able to hear small voices will be able to hear this voice so uh, this is that and then uh, this is a small unit that i'm uh, able to show now this is a uh, hearing aid which was used earlier which were made in which we are uh, having a very small microphone inside uh and then we are having a small amplifier consisting of uh, transistors and all and then we are having a small battery over here say a button cell and then this uh mic will hear that those sounds and then it is going to uh, amplify a little bit then it is going to a speaker now this speaker is uh, uh if you are able to see now these speakers uh, are being directly connected Uh, to the ear lobes and uh, therefore they are very easy uh, for a person to hear and this can be put in the ear itself like we put a uh, uh, say our goggles and also we can put this this was the uh, system which were uh, we were using earlier 
in the earlier days when these microcontrollers were uh, not in that uh, form so now they are being replaced by they are being replaced by a digital hearing aid or a microcontroller based signal processors now these systems now are using microcontrollers for uh, the processing of these data now they are used in variable sizes and variable shapes and these these are having a small uh, microcontrollers processors based inside it which will be doing all these jobs of uh, amplifying those signals and recording these signals and they, they can be given directly to this uh, sorts of uh, hearing speakers now the thing is i was working under uh, i was fortunate to get a chance to work under um, our, our earlier speaker uh, uh, the professor abhay deshpande sir and i i came to know that we are having a very small size of microcontroller of a, say a tape like uh, structure and he is using those microcontrollers for variable applications and uh, he are he is a very tycoon in microcontrollers so these microcontrollers are very small in size and can be used anywhere in this so if you are able to see these are a uh, very small sized uh, uh, nowadays microcontroller based hearing aids that are coming up so what are the basic differences why we are going to uh, employ microcontrollers inside this can be uh, seen by these some of the advantages which uh, digital hearing aid has this uh, generally cost less than digital hearing aids so analog hearing aids are very uh, cheaper and these can be programmed with noise reduction algorithms to help reduce background noise highly programmable for various listening environments most flexible and adjustable for specific user needs so these are some of the advantages of a digital or a microcontroller based hearing aids that coming that those are coming up nowadays and uh some uh, some of the there are some more advantages of uh, analog hearing aids also but we are we are mainly concerned about the uh, microcontrollers which are being employed in these types of hearing aids now the second one we are uh, working on or we might be knowing are the ecg or the electrocardiograph uh, so in this uh ecg the potentials the bio potentials of a human body uh, are being taken by the electrodes and they are being uh, processed by these and then these are given to the microcontrollers and they are used for recording and for diagnostic purposes so ecg is uh, nothing but the electrocardiograph that is the electric electro potentials or uh, bio potentials of uh heart so these are being taken by the electrodes which are connected uh, over here and uh, by calibrations they they are given to microcontrollers so these are some of the basic applications where we are employing the microcontrollers nowadays these uh, are some of the ecg signal measurements uh, devices which are being used these are the desired input interfering inputs uh, like 60 to 50 hertz noise voltage displacements currents and modifying inputs are orientation of patient cables when the plane of the cable is perpendicular to the magnetic field and the magnetic uh, interference is maximal so these are some of the devices where we can drastically use the microcontrollers in biomedical instrumentation now uh, the second one is the electroencephalograph that is actually nothing but the uh, recording of the signals of human brains so uh, we are going to now detect the uh, frequencies which are coming out of human brains and we can use it for this so these signal parameters and patterns indicate the health of the brain eeg is the key area of biomedical data analysis and microcontrollers are playing a vital role in these electroencephalograms so how they are now it's an origins of brain waves now these are some of the waves which are being generated by the brains uh, which we termed as alpha beta gamma uh, delta and theta and here are the mental conditions the psychic conditions of a uh, uh, human uh, humans and there we have 
discuss that how uh, we can uh, use these signals to detect the various uh, say abnormalities in uh, human body so uh, if you are able to see this uh, this is the situations of a human body and uh, as we have recently heard about uh, sushant singh he has committed suicide and if if uh, we might have done his eeg and we have been controlled uh, monitoring those things so he might be might not be able to do the, that suicide because it requires a certain level of uh, say human abnormality where we are not able to understand what is wrong and what is right but a man wants to do something and that might be in the form of a suicide also so these are some of the parameters which are very important uh, in biomedical instrumentations then uh, we are having uh, electronic nose this is what i have uh, say cropped from a uh, 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 one of my eminent uh, say uh, guru uh, professor gaurish naik from goa uh, who is always keen to show these uh, electronic nose and this electronic nose uh, can sense the smells of different uh, uh, things which can be used very very widely the, the applications can be used for air water soil plant volatiles and so so over and so forth so if you are able to see this can be developed and the cost of these uh, devices are very high in our uh, uh, say environment in our india why we are not able to uh, develop these sorts of uh, things so this is something which which is very uh, innovative so we can use this electronic nose then we are uh, again having electronic tongue on that note so electronic tongue if you are able to see this so this is a very small chip now a tongue senses the test test of uh, us certain things so that can be uh, that can be detected by using these sorts of sensors and in which we can employ microcontrollers very widely microcontrollers can be used and now uh, expanding the field of microcontrollers we can use the liquids dissolved in organics and in organics aquatic mold growth soil analysis and many things even in our human body also we are able to uh, have some chemical compositions due to which we be uh, affected by some viruses or diseases like why so this can be done so why not we can develop some of the uh, some of the uh, biosensors which can detect the covid virus itself and we it enters from the mouth so if you are having these sorts of uh, uh, electronic machines or electronic biosensors i hope there might not be any covid patients in here so these are some of the most important uh, things now some more applications are like dialysis in which we are uh, we are uh, having the impure blood and we are purifying it and then we are again transferring it so so these all employs a uh, greater hardware and software uh, techniques to do these things uh, so these are some of the applications of dialysis uh, some of the applications of microcontrollers where we are we are, we are using uh, microcontrollers very drastically and very widely and nowadays due to this corona pandemic we are very much in short of ventilators where the patients who are very serious in uh, in serious in uh, covid and they they require these types of ventilators and as we are know the conditions of uh, say us there were no ventilators the patients uh, were outside the covid patients were outside so these are some of the things where microcontrollers are being employed now coming next to that we have some wearable monitoring devices also so if you are able to see we are able uh, we are now uh, using this sorts of wearable uh, monitoring devices like this which can uh, check your steps and all and we are using it all even you, the mobiles can be connected on your um, watches uh, on your wearable devices so these are some of the uh, basic things where we are we, we can explore ourselves and we can have a tremendous research on those things even some of the uh, acha okay so these are uh, the 
parameters that that can be uh, developed the day before we are talking we were talking about some of the parameters which can be inbuilt to the students so that uh, the device itself will measure the temperature of that students and we don't have to measure those uh, temperatures so this can be done uh, by this now coming to the microcontrollers i'm talking about microcontrollers applications of microcontrollers and uh, in biomedical instrumentations i hope this might be uh, uh, professor abed deepande sir would uh, uh, say call me on this if i talk in microcontrollers because he is a very uh, a tycoon in this uh, field but i will little brush all about this microcontrollers there are various microcontrollers like arduino these are the module kits which are already being uh, uh, available in the market and are very low cost and these are some of the ics uh, of uh, microcontrollers which can be used avrs arms and uh, atmel so that can be programmed and uh, these are specifically arduino peripherals are very nice very easy to use and we have uh, in the internet open sources of uh, uh, inter open sources uh, of sites where we can download the programs we can program the arduino and we can check some small little programs where we can use small parameters um, the day before yesterday itself i have seen at uh, deshpande sir's uh, workshop some small, some students were uh, working on uh, uh, bio sensors as say heart sen heart uh, bit me measurement and uh, pulse sensor they were working on this arduino and they are very simple gadgets which we can develop now if you are if the programs which are uh, able to run on this microcontroller can be uh, say uh, can be induced in a very small microcontroller chip and that can be used for those sensors and all so this is uh, the arduino peripherals which which are by recently widely used then uh, yes i was also uh, would like to talk on this that we are having some simulations also tinker cad uh, arduino simulator where we can have n number of programs where have where we have uh, uh, simulation devices small uh, resistances capacitors and all module sensors where we can use those sensors we can use those programs and we can check uh, those programs there itself in uh, tinkercad and then they can be copied and they can be used for your applications also so this can, this is a very uh, nice platform tinkercad uh, uh, simulation where Uh, which is a very uh, widely used and it is uh, free of cost of course so we can use it so this is uh, a tinker cad then these are some of the applications which i need to show you that where tinker cad is having uh, we can have some uh, uh, say small motors rotating we can develop some robots we can have ir sensors ultrasonic sensors and uh, then we can uh, Uh, develop some uh, we can uh, store or we can see it on the lcd displays and also these all softwares are readily available on uh, arduino platform on uh, also on tinkercad so we can use these uh, programs already installed and they are very cheap in uh, cost say i have brought this arduino kit in around 300 rupees uh, and we can develop so many uh, things on that so this is uh, arduino and the second one is a very important coming up is the raspberry pi 3 now this is a, a dynamic sort of uh, microprocessor microcontroller kit where it's 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 just equivalent to pentium pc now it has got everything in built inside it it has got wifi module it has got bluetooth module and it had uh, it had got usb it had got lan ran everything connected in the small module of raspberry pi so it's it's a wonderful tool where we can uh, explore many things and um, hopefully uh, sir will sir might be talking on this so uh, what is actually a raspberry i will just brush it uh, a little bit of in introduction of raspberry pi uh, it is actually a ca credit card size single board cpu uh, which was developed by uk uh, by raspberry pi foundation in 2009 and this concept initiated by eden upton 
who works at Broadcom to promote the study of basic computer science studies in schools and colleges to develop interest among the kids and adults. Uh, mind this, uh, friends, student friends, that this is for you people. Now they develop these kits for the students to learn these sorts of programming, uh, a basic sort of programming where we can explore many things. So this is Raspberry Pi even. Uh, these are some of the peripherals which I need to show you all that they are having, how many peripherals they are having. I have just talked it. You can have a network LAN -man connector over here. You have four USB ports uh, connected over here. You have a HDMI cable. Then you have a camera port, audio, video port. Uh, this is the microcontroller that is being used. This is USB power. And these are some display ports over there. This is a Bluetooth module. And again, we are having some uh, Wi-Fi module also. So this is a very wonderful tool for exploring uh, new programs for the uh, students and the research fraternity. So uh, this, these are some of the platforms where we can use this Raspberry Pi free of cost. So this is learning from program that is Python, C, Java, uh, a little bit of extensions, uh, Ruby, Perl. Python is a superb uh, programming tool. Uh, these all works on this. Then uh, we are coming to the next small portion. I will take it as the IoT, that is Internet of Things. This is a very emerging field uh, in healthcare industries. So uh, this is uh, Internet of Things, May means where we uh, can use the data which is somewhere so stored in the server and that data can be used for the further diagnosis or the further uh, use of that. So say, for example, if you are expecting a weather report, so what was the history that has been stored in these conditions of these environmental conditions, this temperature, this pressure and the moisture that we have in the um, air, so in this situation, what was the uh, rainfall? What was the type of a season over there? And that can be used for this. And though the things, this all is called as Internet of Things. So uh, now, nowadays, uh, Internet of Things are very widely used, as you all know. Uh, if, you, if you are using YouTube and if you are subscribing some channels and if you are able to see some uh, new YouTube channels, so what happens uh, whenever you switch second time, you'll be able to see the similar sort of uh, you, uh, videos are being displayed on your screen. Why is it so? Because they are keeping track of your um, uh, interest. So as you, are, as you are seeing those videos, they will already be pushing those videos on your screen so that you might be requiring those. So, so these type of data can be used in healthcare also. So this is the whole thing is called as the internet of things. Now these internet of things can also be used for a biomedical instrumentation. Now, how this can be used? Now, can, can you imagine that you, how you're going to predict there is a chances of a second heart attack? So this, this data is to be somewhere in the database, in the server. And the, using this data, that the people who have this second heart attack, what were their symptoms at that point? What were their age? What was their uh, diseases? What were their parameters? What were, what were their condition of the uh, heart? What, were the, what was their condition of their, uh, say, uh, pulse rate? And the other parameters of a body. And using those data, we can, we can predict that with what are the maximum probability or the maximum chances of having a second heart attack. So this is a, going to be a tremendous revolution in the field of biomedical implementation to use this. So uh, this was one of that. And again, this is the IoT infrastructure that uh, very, uh, say, available, readily available on the uh, readily available uh, over uh, the, these pages, free of cost, you can use those servers for those things, Amazon, Wine River Intel, Cisco, Google, and they are providing this uh, platform and they are pro providing the data also 
for your use so this can be used then uh these are some of the servers that the, those are very free of cost and those can be used where we can use that data for our applications so, so these are some of the servers now coming to a little bit of a machine learning now a simple thing machine learning and uh, is called as uh, artificial intelligence uh, just thing i have showed you i i have talked about the internet of things now this internet of things can be used to teach the machines which we call it as the artificial intelligence now if if i want that uh, a car should be driven without a driver so what type of uh, say uh, what type of parameters were uh, were required for uh, say uh, required for an accident to come so what speed should be there what must be there how we can uh, say uh, say turn to the left turn to the right so we have gps system we can monitor that and these are all are all things can come under a machine learning we can teach the robots we can detect some day i have heard about some doctors which were uh, examining the uh, covid patients and since there was a there was a risk of uh, getting uh, themselves uh, uh, say uh, with that covid virus itself so to make sure that they should be uh, maintaining a, a, a specific distance from the covid patient while examining this can we develop some uh, robots which can uh, which can Uh, say detect those things those parameters which can see whether the uh, in the tongue or in the uh, say uh, that that there is uh, some viruses or not so if we can develop these sorts of things and these are these are the things where we require these types of machine learning uh, programs and say they they machines can be taught how to diagnose how to treat and we are maintaining the distance we can do these things and these are being done only 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 using the microcontrollers uh, of uh, various sorts so these are some of the machine learnings and now why machine learnings are used so machine machine learning quickly and automatically produces models that can analyze bigger more complex and deliver faster more accurate results even on a very large scale this is the application of machine learning so machine learning also facilitates computers uh, in building models for from sample data and in order to automate decision making processes based on data inputs so these are the basic requirements why we require machine learning now uh, what are the examples so i have i was just uh, uh, discussing about some of the heart attacks uh, now here i am uh, given uh, another example where we can have the uh, say detecting cancer in this so to to predict what are the symptoms for a patient in a cancer say for a mouth cancer or say say for a breast cancer so what are their symptoms so these data can be used to teach the machines and this is the real time examples where we can use microcontrollers in hospitals then uh, these are some of the applications uh, uh, including the healthcare digital marketing spam detector spam detector as you all know that there might be some mails which we have and which doesn't have any relevance so those mails are being directly uh, put it on the spam itself so and so many are there so these are some of the things that i need to discuss now coming back to the students which i am very very concerned about of electronics basically uh, bsc and msc electronics students and as we are all know that there is a falling age in the uh, electronics engineering field there are no students in the engineering field and i, I hope uh, but uh on the contradictory what i feel and what i know is that there are many many job prospectors of msc electronics students and there are simple basic msc electronics are required or there uh in these uh,
tycoon in this and they are uh, as i uh, as i have heard that he is uh, uh, a member of a uh, texas instrument as you are able to see over here so there there is lot more requirement of instrumentation uh, peoples in over there and they also we have we were talking about there were so many um, say uh, requirements of basic msc electronic students in vietnam itself though china has uh, since japan has uh, shifted some of their industries in um, say vietnam and some other countries so there there was a drastic uh, increase in the requirements of these um, this uh, peoples basically electronics people which we which who can understand the hardware as well as software also so um, my main job as a teacher is not only to teach a student but also to provide some of the platforms where they can where they can excel themselves and they can explore their careers also while enjoying the, enjoying this electronics field so these are some of the fields which i need to show you in this talk and uh, uh lastly i can conclude that the microcontrollers in biomedical instrumentation is very very high and we should work on those my biomedical instrumentations we should learn those biomedical uh, uh, microcontrollers and we can explore them in n number of n number of fields not only in biomedical instrumentations but there are various problems where we can discuss where we can solve those problems by using microcontrollers now um, coming to the field we can conclude that by using this biomedical uh, microcontrollers we can uh, give doctors a hand for treatment as well as for diagnosis so uh, we can check all those things results now the microcontrol the results of the microcontrollers are very um, uh, say it's 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 very they are very near to accurate so we can predict many things before the calamities to happen again the efficiency of these instruments using microcontrollers are very high then uh, in this pandemic covid 19 it is very useful that those microcontrollers can be used for n number of uh, uh, n number of uh, applications specifically on biomedical front so i request it's my personal urge from my, from the bottom of my heart that all the students should take a very very important note that the biomedical or the instrumentation or the electronics is never going to die and there there are lot many scope just we have to explore those scopes and without uh, without uh, fearing about the jobs and all so you can develop your own as uh, Sh professor sharma sir has rightly said that uh, our prime minister has said that we should have an atmanirbhar sort of uh, india so we can develop those instruments here itself in india we won't have to export those instruments from the outside and we can develop these biosensors we can develop n number of applications of microcontrollers and we can explore our careers in those things and even there are lot more requirements in Uh, uh in abroad there are biomedical universities i have heard about many biomedical universities uh, abroad one of uh, our colleague who was the speaker in our international uh, web symposium biomedical instrumentation of boon to healthcare industry uh, professor ali reza he he was from toronto uh, canada and he was dealing in robotics so he required a lot of hands in robotics in biomedical instrumentation itself so it's it's my personal uh, urge for all the instrumentation all the electronic students that they should take maximum benefit out of the course which we have designed for you people and uh, this is all from my side so this is what i need to tell all the students success doesn't but in effort so keep learning and in this covid 19 you had made it a point to listen to me patiently uh, and i am very thankful and obliged to um, professor pawar sir who has given me this opportunity to present my uh, thoughts and views of uh, microcontrollers uh, in the application of uh, uh, biomedical instrumentation and uh, thank you very much thank you sir
for uh, giving me this opportunity thank you all the principal of uh, dr ambedkar college uh, madam and sharma sir and all the um, say all the uh, members of this organizing committee thank you one and all thank you very much sir well done nilesh very nice very nice presentation good good okay. keep it up keep it up we expect many more things from you definitely sir definitely keep coming to the department you find that of thing okay so thank you are, thank you very much nilesh so you are um, uh, sharing a valuable knowledge with us now there are so many things you have to explain like a biological there are many biological sensors element hearing of uh, aids ecg and sound of a amplifiers that uh, small uh, sound of amplifiers that can be converted electrical signals into the uh, sound signals and the so many applications on the basis of a microcontroller you have already explained and we are uh, very much thankful to uh, guide us about the applications of a microcontroller thank you very much uh, nilesh there are uh, some questions please uh, i will answer. try to i will try to and good i morning. hope that good morning uh, nilesh sir good morning, it was very informative session thank you very much participant want to know sakshi kimatkar she want to know what is the difference between arduino and microcontroller okay um, sakshi kimatkar is all, uh, actually she is uh, uh my student of mota science college she is in semester 6 uh very nice question sakshi actually microcontroller is basically a chip and arduino is a full module where we can uh, program the circuits so microcontroller is basically a small chip we can program i i hope uh, abhay deshpande sir is there and i have not overruled him i want to cross uh, his arena of microcontroller so he will talk more about uh, microcontroller asset and he will like, also explain about audio okay, thank, thank you sir so i want to know what is the future of the microcontroller can it become nano controller in future nano yes. it can be yes yes of course as you as you have, as we can see you that we have, we have a, a microcontroller on our fingertip yeah so if if we are inducing or if you are integrating a small uh, uh, thing in, in a very small package so we can have a nano so, sort of things also we are we still we are having many more uh, bio sensors and bio devices which are being used uh, in the biomedical yeah. arena right so yeah. this can yeah. be thank so, you sir thank you very much thank you sir okay all right uh, nilesh thank you sir now i would like to sir. invite dr abhay deshpande sir uh, please uh, uh, give your uh, informative informations about the microcontroller role of a microcontroller in day to day life please uh, share with us uh, deshpande sir well basically uh, thank you thank you very much sir i am uh, thanks thankful to you as well as uh, uh dr sharma sir who always uh, push me uh, to to talk uh, uh, many things uh, where i i am i'm just a learner of this and i am really thankful to uh, dr nilesh mishram sir that he has explored wonderfully and uh, he he has covered most of the uh, part uh, that 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 uh, that uh, really required to understand uh, about this microcontroller so uh, now uh, here uh, i find the, that uh, the number of participants are around 11 so uh, instead of uh, having the, uh, the 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 lecture kind of thing uh, if if it is possible for you that uh, uh, punam ma'am uh, asks uh, some question and uh, there are few questions so uh, rather we will begin with the questions and uh, i will explain you how to do it now uh, mr mr ram sir uh, told uh, that uh, how exactly we can do uh, you can we can use the thing 
uh, where we can use now I, i will try to focus on how we can use and what we required to do for that what we required to uh, to understand about uh, the things and how to learn these technologies uh, uh, out of this okay uh, one one very interesting question was uh, asked by whether it will become nano processor so uh, let me answer this first now uh, this is already a nano processor we we already in the nano technologies so uh, and fortunately uh, ambedkar college is doing a uh, very good work in nanotechnologies so all chips are uh, basically in nanometers uh, and we talk uh, about the 0.2 nanometer kind of thing so uh, yes it's it's already we are in nanometer we are not calling it as microcontroller so uh, it's already in nano again the, the question was asked by and i request you all that you turn on your uh, audios and uh, videos so that as we don't have so many uh, people here so uh, we we can uh, rather interact rather than uh, uh, talking some something routine so i request you all to to turn on uh, the microphone and the videos so that we can we can rather interact uh, rather than i i'll tell you because i'm i'm really thankful to vishram sir Yes, sir. I will. I will add uh, here something that only yeah. few people are here, which are organizing committee, and all the uh, say viewers are on YouTube, so they are live on that. So okay, okay. Are they, are, they are live li- live on that. So we cannot uh, watch watch they what they want no, to no. ask. No, no. But but they can uh, ask the questions on YouTube itself, and Poonam Madam is going to uh, sir, give those questions. Sir, we have all right, all right. many participants live on uh, live yeah. on YouTube, so you can yeah. continue your session, sir. Abhay sir. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I actually I was thinking that uh, there there are uh, very uh, very interesting group of uh, people where we can really interact, and uh, rather uh, instead of uh, giving a conventional uh, uh, kind of lecture, uh, I uh, we 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 can have an interact and uh, I can take your query and I I have many things to show you all. Instead of uh, showing the presentation, I can show you actual things because I'm sitting in my uh my lab so so i have many many things where i can demonstrate to you i can show you and i can uh, tell you that how exactly we can use all this so okay i will i will begin with the raspberry pi and uh, and, and the kind of uh, technology uh that uh, we, we 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 can explore so uh, punam ma'am whether uh, you have any question uh, so so i i will begin with it your microphone microphone is not uh, on yeah ah, yes. now it's on so i want to know ki which type of material is exactly used in electronic tongue electronic yeah electronic tongue which nilesh sir discussed earlier in electronic tongue 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 is yeah, yeah, jeep tongue. jeep jeep yeah okay 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 <laughs> well <laughs> well i will talk uh, on two two things now um, uh, see we we are having a sensory system uh, basically uh, uh, oh, the whole thing what 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 we are trying to do we are trying to put all our intelligence what we uh, the way we are thinking the way we are sensing the way uh, we we reacting to the situation so this is basically called our uh, intelligence or, or we are calling it intelligence and if same thing we put it in the in computer it is artificial intelligence nothing else so here the uh, uh, the question is very interesting that how the tongue can sense the different test or 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 or, or uh, uh, we can say how how to recognize the say uh, your test and how to recognize the the smell you see these these two things are very 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 important probably and which are not a part of uh, any any machines uh, up till now and yes there is a huge scope to do something on this uh, particular thing so thank you very much uh, punam ma'am uh, you you allow me to talk on this my area of interest <coughs> so so see the thing is uh, test i i will take test or electronic tongue basically for for the thing now here uh, we know that if if uh, we 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 are sensing different uh, 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 
uh, kind of test on our tongue. So if I put a sugar, then I will experience this is sweet. Now, uh, can we have any mechanism where if I put a sugar and I use a glucometer, like, like, like simple how we are measuring the glucose inside our blood. So uh, if the known sugar is dropped, uh, in, in let us say in a water kind of thing and if we are having a glucometer to test the content of sugar in the water so probably we we come out with the with the with the sweetness right so we we can mark it as uh, the level of sweetness and l let me tell you one one very interesting thing about uh, the the uh, the thing is about tikhat i don't know exact word in english uh, so uh, uh, normally we used to say tikha hai. So uh, that that uh, tikha pan is uh, basically uh, graded in America. Uh, this, this is graded on a scale of one to ten, and uh, they are basically what what kind of uh, uh, mirchi we we normally use to eat. Uh, normally we find that the very if it is very small uh, uh, mirchi then. Uh, and and the color is very dark uh, uh, green. Then we, we we used to say that this is a hot uh, kind of uh, thing. But there are many many uh, uh, this kind of mirchi are there in the in the world where they can categorize. Now now um, the, what we are saying the 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 hottest uh, mirchi in our country is scaled at five or six in, on on the basis of uh, this. Now, the thing is, we will have to identify. See, here, uh, the thing is, uh, 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 there is, there is no, no uh, basically a device available for which we can directly measure it. But see, there is a very simple method to do it. If, if we have any, any uh, uh, let us say, uh, uh, any chemical uh, person who is in contact, because uh, here everything is multidisciplinary so there we can say uh, to which uh, uh, of the chemical this uh, mirchi reacts and what kind of chemical action takes place and can we measure it by electrode now that electrode comes to our our area <coughs> and there by putting these two electrodes uh, can we measure that uh, in, uh, the hotness or the hot uh, or, or can we scale it to uh, 1 to 10? Let me tell you one very interesting uh, 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 project, uh, which, which is probably still alive in, uh, in many of the seed processing industries. Now, what they want to know is, uh, can, can we have a number of seeds inside that uh, fruit or inside that uh, chili and uh, can we have any scanning mechanism by which we can measure number of seeds inside that uh, chili? So, so here, basically, we, if we talk about the chilies, then there uh, we can find that uh, can we develop any mechanism by which we can scan the number of uh, the seeds inside it so that we can use it for the processing seeds. And second thing is about the chilies. Uh, the most interesting thing is that the the uh, the hotness that exists uh, inside the, the, the there are uh, some thread kind of things inside the chili and that contains the hotness of that chili. So here, can we have any mechanism by which we can measure that number of lines, number of cell, basically this, this is thread kind of thing. And that threads can be measured and from externally, by simply observing, by passing that chili through the machine, can we identify hotness or, 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 or the tikhatpana of that uh, uh, mirchi or chili? So here, yes, it is possible. So here, now see, see this, this thing, these areas are basically required in our country see agricultural whenever they are producing some goods what standard or what kind of chilies they are producing can we grade it can we export it 
can we uh, give them appropriate prices for the quality of that chili see what is happening in our country is very simple that uh, our 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 farmers are producing the, the the crops and at whatever price they are getting they are just selling it and they are making money out of it but remember this is this is a fact that if we can able to grade which americans are very very much ahead than all of us normally they used to do this kind of thing so they used to grade the 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 uh, the things like chilies or potatoes or tomatoes and accordingly they are uh, marking their rates and understand this fact that our farmers can able to export the thing but we we, we don't know many things but now what what is happening uh, i i just recently visit in january i uh, in last last uh, uh, year basically year in november december and january i visit to nashik and nashik is is a, is a place where they are exporting this grapes now they are having a very good quality control because whenever we talk about the exporting this this uh, uh, this our production basically we we are uh, agricultural based country where we are producing many 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 things and we can export and nashik is one of the biggest example in our country that they are exporting so much of grapes so here they are having a system by which they are identifying the quality of that grape and then they label it and these label they are tested there in us or they, they are exporting to america they are exporting to european countries russia and 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 one very wonderful thing which i came to know is that uh, russian people they 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 um, like a little uh, ambat uh, type of uh, draksha so so the thing is uh, uh, the the european countries and the american countries america basically they love sweet uh, grapes but russia they love uh, some uh, uh, kind of amber type of uh, uh, thing so here they required to identify the test they required to mark that yes this test is exactly same as you want so here our role automatically comes into the play so here can we have any mechanism by which i can put that grape in some of the solution and then there uh, from the electrode i will try to generate some signal and by which i can label the uh, the quality of that grape so here uh, the, the the see the things are very interesting and where we can really think much and we can have our own quality control uh, controlling products by 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 Uh, using uh, these simple techniques, so here it's it's a great challenge for But all all academician uh, to 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 serve our farmer and to make them uh, uh, exporter of the um, uh, of the uh, agricultural production. So this is one. Another uh, interesting which which I have started to work from last two years. Can we have a smelling or sniffer dog? Mm-hmm. can can we have a, uh, uh, the sensors like uh, uh, normally uh, dogs are having see the dogs are used in in surveillance where uh, they can smell something and they can follow that smell and can we have any mechanism by which we can build our own device by which we can assist police for for investigation kind of thing so here uh, the thing is very interesting uh, madam uh, uh, the thing is that we are having a hydrogen sensor we are having nitrogen sensor we are having carbon dioxide sensor we are having oxygen sensors we are having uh, the alcohol methyl ethyl uh, see uh, the thing is how we are smelling so here uh, if if we want to analyze then there there, there is a, there is a lot of research is already done but see the thing is like something which i want to smell let us say i want to smell the sanitizer because it's it's a good habit today that we will put a sanitizer on the hand and i'll smell 
So here, uh, uh, this smell is basically, whenever I put that sanitizer on my hand, the vapors are coming out. Or it is, it is a smell, what is smell? Some, some gases are, uh, this, this reaction generate few gases. And if we tap that gases, so here I can understand the kind of smell that uh, uh, that uh, sanitizer is generating. So here I, I did one very wonderful experiment on alcohol, particularly in, in terms of identifying drunken people. Now I have a device by which I can sense a person from two feet. So even if he is standing in front, I cannot able to smell the, the alcohol or drunken person's smell, but my device can sense it. So, and that, that is used in uh, uh, one of the multinational company and you all are aware, JCB. Normally the JCB are run by the uh, drivers who normally not sitting on the driving chair without taking some uh, kind of uh, alcohol. So here, this device is going to uh, identify and uh, then uh, it will precisely tell whether the device is, um, uh, or rather driver is renter or not. And it will uh, dial in the background and uh, call the concerned person, sending messages. So this is where the technology comes in the picture. Now, see here the thing is, uh, these, these two things are very, very interesting um, uh, for this. And I, 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 I request all, all, all the uh, people who are listening this, that this uh, sniffer dog, see, the sensors are available. We will have to understand its behavior. And here, once we understand the behavior of these sensors, then there we can easily read in any of the microcontroller where it may be Raspberry Pi, it may be Arduino, it may be your dedicated 8051 AVR, Peak, ARM, MSP430, DSPs, Renesas. So all these are uh, the manufacturers of uh, the different architecture of microcontrollers. So wherever we feel it's, it's a good platform to work on, and then there we can easily uh, learn the thing. So here, uh, uh, I think uh, I, I touch that particular thing uh, which which is uh, raised by Madam. Now, uh, uh, shall uh, shall I uh, uh, focus on how to learn the technology? So uh, so that I, I I will move ahead uh, as per your, uh, your 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 demand. So. Uh, basically, uh, you you go on demanding. Uh, I will I will tell you because that that way I can able to serve. I can able to you know, tell you more, or we can we can able to utilize this time much better way. So, ma madam is there? A a anyone want to ask? And here is a chat box. I'm also also uh, uh, here in chat box. You can drop the uh, chat also. Okay, okay. Uh, you can ask question in chat box also. Okay, sir. Yeah. Continue. Okay, I'll continue on the same. Yes, yes sir. Okay. Good morning, madam. Anything? Yes, sir, uh, sir uh, can you tell me how, if this microcontroller? It, these are uh, this in future. This these can be used in nano. Con these will be used as nano controllers. And can it be con controlled by Wi-Fi? Yes, well, very good. Again, very thankful to uh, this question. Now, uh, I'm working, uh, right now I'm working on uh, uh, Texas Instruments SOCs. This is a system on chip. Now, this is a single chip. I, I'll show you, let me show you the, the chip itself. And uh, here uh, you will find that this is, this is a chip where you can have a Wi-Fi. Uh, can you able to see this? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I, I will I will pinpoint this. Now this one is a SOC. 
and this is from Texas Instruments. Okay. Now, let me explain uh, these chips. Now, these chips are basically microcontroller plus Wi-Fi or microcontroller plus Bluetooth. Hmm. Or this chip could be microcontroller plus Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth. So here, this is a single chip solution. And uh, let me tell you that here, we are having a Wi-Fi stack. And, 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 and let, let me explain you the software in, uh, quickly, that this is a stack, uh, which normally label as Wi-Fi stack or Bluetooth stack. Normally this stack is already working within that controller, within that chip. And here we are having an open microprocessor where I can read some analog signal. I will convert it into digital ADC is built in. I will scale that signal and then I can upload. So here for small IoT solutions, like what um, uh, Dr. Satish Sharma said, uh, sir said that uh, industry 4.0 is coming. Now understand industry 4.0 is, we are generating a small data. Like, let us say, for example, how many of us are watching this telecast or simply they keep uh, the uh, microphone and the uh, things open. Now, this, this thing, can we have any sensing mechanism by which we can say that he is in front of his uh, uh, your mobile or his laptop or computer? Still, this is missing. Now, this is an information by which by very small sensor, we are collecting this information and we are uploading to the, let us say, Zoom server, and which will show me that he is present in front of the screen or he simply turned it on and gone out. So here, because of this online teaching also, it, it is a very big challenge for all teachers nowadays because there we cannot uh, really see that whether people are uh, really watching you or they simply turn it on and <laughs> gone away. So Sarma, Sarma sir, uh, I, I'm, I'm really <laughs> like that. You, you, you are now visible to me. So uh, here, the things are like this. So this is a small information which we are collecting. Now in industry, we can find, uh, the, let us say, we, we will take a small example of Mahindra and Mahindra where they are assembling all the tractors, all right? So they are having millions of small parts which they require to fit into the tractor. Now, the question is, if one of the labor forget to attach any small screw, how we are going to identify this? So here, it's, it's a great challenge for all of us that to generate that information that he has installed that small screw and every part in the tractor. Because see what is happening, the biggest problem with the Mahindra and Mahindra is that whenever they assemble entire tractor and when it goes in the quality control, there they, they identify, okay, something is missing in the entire tractor. And what they require to do is, they require to deassemble entire track and then they again they are sending all the things so they are required to do the things twice which will increase their quality control um, cost and the production cost and if we are able to provide any small solution by which we can simply assure that he has put that part or not and let me tell you punam ma'am for 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 uh, kitchen can we have any camera connected on your uh, uh, kitchen top, let us say on the gas, and you want to I know that whether you, you know, put uh, salt in it or not, or you, whether you put that particular masala into it or not. Also, we so can now, see, uh, we forgot to put and uh, that machine. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Normally, we used to drop uh, say sugar, we used to drop the salt, we used to put some some ingredients, and if you forget, and this is this is happening with everyone. So can we have a system by which 
we can identify okay you you drop the salt and you forget sugar all right so you can drop it so this this is basically the information generated and if we get all this information on one of the server and by which we can take a um, administrative managerial decision then that is industry 4.0 so it's 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 very simple to 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 know to understand now no, normally we it happens with us also whether i put my wallet in my pocket or not or whether i forget my specs so so there is something so here we i'm talking about i'm talking about the soc so if you go to the texas instruments ti.com then there you will find that cc 2240 2540 2541 these are your uh, ple and and let me clear clear clarify one thing which which is the probably that technology is going to hit uh, all over the world is called ble bluetooth low energy now this bluetooth low energy is basically uh, we presume that that a device very small device which will work on our button cell for few years which will collect your your body temperature continuously and which will radiate on the bluetooth which will tell the the uh, the person around you that what is your body temperature so so we we, we are coming out with a with a belt kind of thing which will tell uh, uh, the patient uh, or, or the person around them that what is the body temperature and what is the pulse rate and again there is one very critical in this corona covid uh, environment in pandemic that what is your spo2 the oxygen percent in uh, your blood so here there are three parameters that is temperature pulse rate or heart rate and the spo2 so these three things again with your identity your identity is also very critical so here uh, that device is going to use as your attendance your your identification as well as it is going to tell other people that what is your body temperature what's pulse rate and what is now this ble this is blue to low energy kind of device and you will find we we will be surrounded by this ble devices in coming days because every small information generated required can be generated by this very small chip and which is very power efficient you put a button cell and forget for 5 years texas is claiming that they can have a temperature sensor uh, by using this chip which can last that small button battery can last for 5 years so here we are in the era of this kind of thing because here this ble is going to collect that small information it will get then uh, uh, turn on that wifi kind of thing which will connect to the internet and through that internet your your data will transfer so here the thing is basically if we talk about the iot's iot's are doing exactly this so the device which is used for for collecting this information and uh, uploading it to the server is 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 basically iot so iot could have uh, many channel because see the information is generated you are having multiple ways to get that data so here bluetooth wifi is one your lan network is another your gsm network could be another one so here that in for generated from that sensor or whatever device so the device which is used in between can learn that thing like again, again i will tell you the nordic nordic companies again american company where that nordic they have launched again wonderful uh, uh, socs for wifi and bluetooth and uh, fortunately they are having a free platform like if you go for the sager embedded studio then there it is a free of cost and that uh, development tool sharma sir this nordic we will have to procure in in very near future 
so nordic nordic is is wonderful uh, uh, company which will provide a development uh, kit at 3000 4000 rupees and development tool free of cost and uh, having a arm processor kind of thing so here we can do lot of lot of lot of processing and we can calculate a very small thing like uh, whether that chili is thicker or not and then we can upload that data to the server and the grower of that chili can get the accurate or appropriate price for it and we will have to uh, do this because we will have to make aware our farmers also so here it it it, it could be a very 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 good contribution of all of us for our farmer so i will tell uh, i just told you the nordic company and the sager embedded platform where you can have that bluetooth wifi and third technology which you may not be aware of that is zigbee so zigbee is normally industry standard wireless protocol where uh, uh, we can assure the the data transfer it is acknowledge based kind of technology again it works on 2.4 gigahertz band so these three technology three wireless technologies are available and you can really work on it so uh, uh, again i request uh, uh, at least uh, the people who are here uh, to 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 tell me that where i should now go so that i can talk a little on that so now ma'am so now ma'am are you there yes sir yes sir, yes i am Ah yes. Yeah. Sharma sir, please. I am there, sir. Don't worry. Yes, sir. Atta Kashor, bolu. Ah, Punam ma'am. Punam ma'am is asking question. Punam ma'am is thank. I am really thankful to Punam ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, general microcontroller worthy, bola sir. Jane karun apne la kisi sir vanna participant la information mile. Okay, okay, okay. ठीक है. तो ना मैम, keep your question ready. I I I will come back again. Okay. So here, uh, the thing is uh, that uh, uh, in this uh, uh, microcontroller, let 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 me tell you what is microcontroller. Microcontroller is a chip where uh, it is a microprocessor basically. Whenever we talk about the uh, uh, normally, whenever uh, we say microprocessor, then there is one term which is very strongly attach is 8 bit microprocessor 16 bit microprocessor 32 bit microprocessor so here normally this 8 bit 16 bit 32 bit or 64 is uh, bits nowadays this is basically microprocessor's capacity to to handle the data so when we are saying 8 bit microprocessor so uh, micro there we are saying this microprocessor can process 8 bit data now what this processes are this process are very simple uh, your your arithmetic and logical operations and uh, the the log, uh, your your uh, data transfer basically microprocessor uh, can uh, do two things uh, rather three things for uh, uh, so first thing is data transfer data transfer means eight bits at a time if microprocessor can transfer eight bit at, at a time that processor label as eight bit if microprocessor can transfer 16 bit at a time it is 16 bit microprocessor now the interesting question is here the data transfer when, when uh, we are learning during our our uh, education what we find that uh, there are resistors inside the microprocessor let us say in 8051 if i take example of 8051 then it is r0 to r7 resistor and if i write instruction like move r0 comma r1 so here it is a standard statement of uh, or syntax of intel so here i am specifying move mov that is my movement data movement uh, 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 instruction and then i will specify uh, the destination comma source now here if i say r0 comma r1 so content of r1 will go to r0 now do not restrict the uh, uh, data transfer capability to this level because here whatever we are doing is Uh, uh the 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 zoom meeting or on on this zoom i'm talking to you this is basically example of data transfer so here the data is collected from my laptop my mobile and this data is streamed 
to your desktop or laptop or mobile. So here it is a data transfer which is going to happening within all these processors. And here we can able to see all these things. So here, this is a capability of microprocessor. This is this microprocessor can do this. It is collecting information from my microphone and my camera and distributing this information to all of you here. So here, this information is in form of data. And this, this is basically a data transfer. Then second, uh, normally we used to say arithmetic and logical operation you can add and subtract and multiply and divide. And uh, again, it can take some logical, uh, it can perform some logical operation like ending, oring, XORing, uh, knotting um, kind of operation. And third, uh, capability I will say for microprocessor is microprocessor can take decisions. So here, while learning any microprocessor, you look at the flag register of that microprocessor. And flag registers are basically your decision making bits. Suppose if I say there is a zero bit or there is a carry bit, so I can have instruction jump on zero or jump on carry or jump on no zero and jump on no carry. So here, this decision making capability of processor is, is such a way it is explored, explored that we can able to program it. If this thing happened, do this. If this is not happened, do that. And kind of thing we can able to embed inside that microprocessor. So for microprocessor, I, I talked about microprocessor. So it is a microprocessor, which is having three capabilities. One is it is basically 8, 16, 32, 64 bit. It can able to or capable of transferring data from one location to another location, one computer, one processor to another processor. Then second, it can perform arithmetic and logical operation. And third, it can take decisions. Now, when we talk about the microcontroller, Controller for understanding microcontroller, we will have to understand two blocks of microprocessor, microprocessor and the memory. There is a block where one block is called microprocessor, which we learn a lot of time. <laughs> Now, this microprocessor block and the memory block. So, basic function of microprocessor is that microprocessor is reading instruction from the memory and microprocessor execute that instruction. Now, understand this fact thoroughly. You can understand any of the architecture in this world. So, what microprocessor is doing? Microprocessor is reading instruction written on the memory and executing that instruction. So here, the thing is, on the memory, we are writing our instruction. We are calling it as a program. So it to the microprocessor and on that memory, we read microprocessor is to read that instruction, execute. Then read next instruction, execute that instruction. Read third instruction, execute. So in this way, microprocessor is going to read and execute these instructions. So here, we require to have a microprocessor and memory. Normally, we used to talk about uh, the memory nowadays. Whenever we require to buy the mobile or laptop or the computers. So here we look at how much of flash is there. Then we decide whether to go for it or we normally say at least 4 GB. So kind of RAM we require to have in that processor so that it, the, the things will become more faster. More memory we have, more faster device we can have. Now here, this memory is basically where we are writing our program, microprocessor is reading. So here the idea of Intel was, can we put this micro, uh, this memory on the microprocessor chip itself? And that becomes a microcontroller. So here, basically microcontroller is basically microprocessor with on-chip memory. So, and here, uh, for 8051, we are having four kilobytes of ROM and 128 bytes of RAM. Now, again, as they put the memory, they thought of, Intel basically thought of uh, uh, 
when 1972 they launched that uh, 8051 architecture at that time they thought of can we have an input output pins also so that directly we can apply the inputs and we will process inside the processor and we will generate the output so there are the input output ports which are embedded in that processor so here we will find inside microcontroller uh, there is a processor there is a memory memory is of two part rom and ram then there are few io ports now if processor is 8 bit io port is also 8 bit if processor is 16 bit io port is also 16 bit if processor is 32 bit like arm processor so io port is 32 bit now here uh, the thing is that they also thought of can we have a concept called timers oblique counters which probably you must have studied in your syllabus so timers and the counters are basically two uh, or this is a wonderful hardware which is put inside that chip the timers let me tell you uh, it, it, it is so important nowadays uh, to run any operating system it may be your windows linux or raspbian or android or any 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 operating system because here operating systems are now multi tasking kind of multi threading kind of thing that your one task is taken by the processor executed for some time and then it will be pushed on the stack second task is taken executed for some time and taken on the stack and in this way by round robin method it will execute task one by one and uh, and 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 the thing which is handling all this is called kernel in the in the operating system and here for doing all this we required a hardware which is called timer tick now this timer tick is basically telling microprocessor that one task time is up now take the second task so we we are having one mechanism which is on the chip but but which is uh, running parallelly and which is generating a real time for the processor and normally this timer tick is of 1 millisecond so this timer is generating one millisecond, interrupt processor, processor understand, now I want to change the task, it will switch to second task, then again after one millisecond, it will execute that task for one millisecond, and after one millisecond, again the timer will tell microprocessor that this one millisecond is over, now you switch to next task. So in this way, these timers are explored or timers are used in designing operating systems. So timer basically understand these are going to generate real time for the microprocessor. Whenever time will permit, I will go in depth of these timers. But for today, uh, I, I will focus on uh, this issue. Now, there is one another uh, called, uh, now whatever I'm talking about, uh, the memories, the IOs, the timers, comes under peripherals. These are the things which are on the chip but called as peripheral peripheral to the microprocessor which is inside that chip so last peripheral is is a ur new <laughs> Uh, sorry, uh, it was just whether I'm back. Yes, yes. Hello, yes, sir. Hello, yeah, yes, you're ah, back. Sir, what was I coming to Okay, 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 okay. okay. So, uh, here, uh, this is UART, so uh, all the data is transmitted bit by bit. 
so uh, nowadays whenever uh, whatever uh, thing you take usb drive or or kind of your usb hard disk or sd cards or uh, all the communication everything is happening Say. important nowadays so whenever you think of learning microcontroller you will have to focus on uart first because everything is accessed the whole in entire world is accessed by the uart only so uh, here this is a uart so uh, this is basically these things are there inside 8051 but if i, I want to further exceed the thing then you will find there is there are terms called analog to digital converter which are also embedded into the same chip so you will have to go a little further avr or pick Hello. Zala, zala, zala. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Aloka, opus. Yes, I'm back. So a PWM channel I'm talking, I was talking about. So PWM is, is basically pulse width modulation by turning uh, the T on and the total T. Uh, we, we know that formula, the duty cycle is equal to T on upon T on plus T off. So by that formula, simple, we are generating equivalent DC voltages. So here uh, for this thing, we, we can have a digital to analog converters also. And then uh, we are having multiple things that you require to understand whenever you talk about the microcontrollers, that this is uh, the voice talk timer. I, I will stress little on voice talk timers. Now, voice talk timer is basically uh, one, one timer given uh, inside the microcontroller. And that uh, voice talk is basically, it is, it is a kind of a timer which look at the processor. And processor required to reset it periodically. Now understand uh, that the thing with a microprocessor is normally microprocessor are hanged during the operations. So there, how to come out of that hanging problem? So we are having one term which is called void of timer on this advanced processors, and this timer is basically a simple timer which is incremented at one machine cycle. And we require to reset it by the processor periodically. But suppose our processor hanged up, then here your processor cannot able to reset that void dock timer, and that void dock timer will reset microprocessor. So see, this is a wonderful uh, thing, wonderful feature of uh, 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 getting uh, our microprocessor from hang condition back to running condition so here the this term is called void of timer and then another term in the microcontrollers that we require to understand is called brown out reset now this brown out reset concept is is due to power fluctuation suppose normally in five volt logic we define that 0 to 0 0.7 is our logic 0 and let us say 3.5 to 5 volt is logic 1 but imagine a condition where uh, this voltage appear 
uh, in between 0.7 to 3.5 volt then your microprocessor cannot understand logic ones and logic zero and starts malfunctioning now here how to uh, remove this condition so there is one wonderful term which is called brown out reset and this brown out reset is uh, is monitoring the supply voltage and if we, if we if we find that this voltage is less than 3.5 it will keep microprocessor in reset state and when power restores it will reset microprocessor and restart microprocessor restarts so here these are basically the practical condition where 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 our microprocessor hanged up and we will have to take out our microprocessor so uh, uh, this is basically the inside little inside look of microprocessor i have not shown any slide to you all but this is a, a quick inside uh, the microprocessor and uh, uh, microcontrollers now uh, i i can uh, watch that power sir is um, uh, for power sir's next instruction so that i can answer the people or if i want to focus any anything then please please uh, ask the question so that we will focus our study on uh, some some uh, uh, your 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 your, yes, uh, your theory uh, sir we yeah, have yes, one sir. question we have one question from our yes. participant kishor rokde he want to ask okay. can we control or check the medical parameters using touch screen technology automatically he want to know can we control or can we check the medical parameters using touch screen technology well it's it's a very good question thanks kishore for asking this question so here touch screen is basically is of two types basically uh, what what touch screen we are using there are of two types one is resistive another is capacitive now whether resistance or change of change of resistance or change of capacitance can they are used to identify medical uh, parameters if answer is yes then answer is yes my answer is also yes but only resistance and only capacitance cannot be used to identify yes uh, in, in way back we, we did one experiment of uh, uh, making a lie detector that that the body temperature whenever person talk lie or whenever he is lying at that time his body temp body resistance changes this this was a basic broad concept we have experimented that so probably whether you are lying whether kishore is lying or not that can be definitely uh, identified by the by the uh, uh, touch screen or rather resistive touch screen yes this is possible but uh, lying Uh, is is cannot be treated as a medical parameter so i think yes or another answer is no but we will have to check thank you sir again madam and uh, one more question from ankush patil rathod he want to know how many sensors can be connected in adreno circuit at a time how many sensors adreno or any processors yeah. now these processors are having one internal adc but they are having eight channels most of the processors are having a single adc inside and they are having eight channels so you can select one of the channel at a, at a time so for arduino you are having eight channel adc and uh, but there is only one adc inside that chip there are multiple chip which are having some um, two adcs inside and 16 channels out so basically this is time divide or time division multiplex if you want to read analog zero you can read analog zero same adc is connected to that particular pin and that input you can read so practically yes you can read eight analog inputs but not at a time internally it is only one adc which is functioning you, at a time you can read only one uh, analog parameter and in arduino it is eight channel one adc 
Thank you, sir. Yeah, All the answers were very satisfying, and the session was very informative. Over to you, Pawan sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, now, uh, sharing a valuable knowledge with us. A uh, very, very thank you very much. Uh, now, I call upon to Mrs. Poonam Yadav. Give a vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, all. On behalf of Dr. Ambedkar College, Diksha Bhumi Nagpur, I, Poonam Yadav, working as assistant professor in the Department of Electronics, take this opportunity to propose vote of thanks to all those who have directly and indirectly contributed to this national webinar on the topic. role of microcontroller in day to day life organized by the department of electronics dr ambedkar college nagpur and the in association with department of electronics and computer science rtm nagpur university nagpur at the outset i would like to express my profound gratitude to our beloved principal dr mrs p m siria for her presence guidance and constant support I would like to thank our distinguished speakers, Dr. Abhay Deshpande, Director, SSG Solution, Nagpur, and Dr. Nilesh Meshram, Assistant Professor and Head, Mohta Science College, Nagpur, for their excellent presentation and valuable guidance, and thus making this webinar interesting and meaningful. I also thank Dr. Hema Menon, IQAC Coordinator, for her constant encouragement and support. i would like to express my heartfelt thanks to convener professor v s pawar head department of electronics dr ambedkar college nagpur co convener dr satish j sharma head department of electronics and computer science rtm nagpur university nagpur organizing secretary mr divakar devedi from department of electronics and computer science rtm nagpur university nagpur organizing members dr nv shivarkar and non teaching staff mr ram ghode for their unflinching support and coordination my heartfelt thanks to all the teaching and non teaching staff and all the participant for putting considerable time and effort to make this webinar successful once again i would like to thank all for your cordial cooperation thank you very much thank you thank you punam for uh, making such a wonderful presentation and uh, the vote of thanks and conducting the proceedings of the one day webinar uh, th thank you very much uh, deshpande sir uh, all yours it's all yours no sir you have been a really a motivating factor for learning uh, microcontrollers uh, you have set a train the department also Uh, you have trained many students in our department when you are conducting Y Y and the projects and so many things. And some students are always coming to you in summers, but uh, taking a training, a specialized training, especially in the form of internship. And you have been really a very helping kind of a person to our students. Uh, I really take this opportunity and this platform for thanking both of you, uh, Dr. Deshpande and Dr. Nilesh Meshram, for making uh, wonderful presentations. and uh, to vasant pawar for coordinating the event and to divagar devedi who is acting as a, the organizing secretary for the dr baba saheb ambedkar college in the department of electronics nagpur university now so thank you sir thank you very much and thank you pawar sir for uh, organizing such a, a beautiful webinar okay thank you very much sir thank you uh, sir abhay sir and nilesh meshram thank you thank very you very much, much sir Okay. Good day. Good day.